Hi, I'm Rose Levy Berenbaum and I'm smelling the chocolatiest of chocolate cakes possible, the Chocolate Domingo. I call it the Chocolate Domingo because I think of it as the tenor of chocolate cakes. It turns out it's really easy to make. The tricky part can be unmolding a chocolate cake so that it comes out whole from the mold. I have some special tricks that make it as easy as you can imagine, so stay tuned on Baking Magic. Look how beautiful this cake looks baked in a daisy pan. In fact, because it's in a daisy pan, I also put daisies to decorate it. I may change the name from Chocolate Domingo to Chocolate Daisy Chain Cake. Let's get started making the batter. People wonder what the difference is between a cake baked with chocolate and a cake baked with cocoa. Well, cocoa has much less cocoa butter in it, and cocoa butter, when it's solid, just like in a chocolate bar, is really hard. So in order to make a tender cake, I like to use cocoa because then I can add the fat that I add is butter. And butter enhances the flavor and it also makes it softer because after it bakes, all those things that you put in it beforehand are going to still be there. So the butter is soft and it's going to stay soft. Only the eggs firm up and cook. So I put the eggs, the sour cream, the cocoa and the vanilla, and those are my liquid ingredients. And I'm just going to whisk together so that I can add them to the dry ingredients. It's amazing that a cake that tastes this chocolatey and full flavored takes under three minutes to mix. Every single other cocoa recipe for a cake that I do, I always add boiling water to the cocoa because it adds so much flavor. I did try boiling the sour cream and it separated horrendously, but it's worth using the sour cream because the sour cream combined with the cocoa makes the most amazing flavor. Now, it's almost like buttercream at this point. It doesn't have to be totally smooth, just well mixed in because it will continue mixing in the beater. Now I'm going to go to the dry ingredients, which are flour, and that's cake flour. It's already been pre-weighed or measured. Granulated sugar. With all that cocoa, you need a lot of sugar to sweeten it baking powder, baking soda because of the acidity of the sour cream, and salt. For all layer cakes, I use the paddle beater because it puts less air into the mixture. Just mix it a little while, a few seconds, to mix in the dry ingredients all together evenly. And now I'm going to add all of the butter. Remember, this is double the butter, so it looks like a huge amount. This is why I don't put butter, I don't put any buttercream on the top because the buttercream is in the cake itself. And half the chocolate, the cocoa mixture. And you can see this is very, very thick. Okay, start beating on low speed. And it takes a few seconds to start moistening the, pow the dry ingredients. And then you can bring it up to medium speed and beat for one half minutes. I immediately smell all the wonderful cocoa chocolate flavors coming up. After a minute and a half, see how the paddle beater has beaten enough air into it so that it makes it light and airy and lighter in color and very smooth. Now I'm going to continue adding the rest of the chocolate mixture to the batter. So on low speed, or you can add it and then put the, the mixer on. Add about half. And then turn the, the mixer up to medium speed or high speed if it's a handheld mix beater. And beat about 20 seconds until it's incorporated smoothly. 
And now because chocolate is so messy, I'm going to, s to lower the bowl and add the rest. I scrape it up against the side of the beater to get it all off. And now I beat it just 20 seconds more. And that's it. The quickest batter imaginable for the most chocolatey cake imaginable. Now the batter is completely mixed in. And I'm going to put it into the pan. And you know there are a lot of different textures in chocolate cakes. Even, if, even though this one is so very chocolatey, it still has the texture of a soft, fine layer cake. Now normally, I bake chocolate cakes, chocolate layer cakes, in pans lined with parchment, greased and floured to make absolutely sure that they come out whole. But I wanted to do these fancier ones, and the challenge was to get all the beautiful decorations from the pan in them. So my secret is using a spray that contains flour and grease in it, and then you'll see a special way to unmold it to ensure that it comes out clean. And a way to make sure that it goes into all the little convolutions and not too much is to use a little brush to brush any excess, although it would still work without doing this. Now I'm going to empty the batter into this pan, and it fills it about half full. To look at this, you'd think it was buttercream. And with a little angled spatula, spread it even, because it won't be even unless you help it out a little. And press it in well, because that way it fills all the little decorative parts. And now it's going to bake in a 350 degree oven for 30 to 40 minutes until it tests done so it springs back when pressed lightly with your finger or a cake tester comes out clean. I also sometimes bake this cake in a Kugelhof pan. So I'm going to show you how to unmold it using this decorative pan because it's been sitting here out of the oven, inverted over a serving plate for five minutes. It can be as much as 10 minutes. But during that time, the heat from the cake steams and separates the cake from the pan. And that's the second secret of how to have it come out of the pan with all of the decorations perfect. Just lift off the pan, and you can see that it came out absolutely clean. So I'm going to put a little decoration on this, although it almost doesn't need it because you want to see how chocolatey it is. For the one in the Kugelhof mold, I'll just dust it lightly with cocoa. So you get a slight difference in the color of the cake beneath it and the lighter color of the cocoa. And for the daisy one, just to bring up the color of the flowers and the chocolate, I'll sprinkle some powdered sugar on top of that. When I studied it at Le Notre in France, they said that chocolate is sad, le chocolat est triste, unless you use a little bit of powdered sugar to give it some happiness and life and light. So, you can still see the daisy pattern, but now it's a little bit brightened. So there you have the chocolate domingo, today the chocolate daisy chain cake, one of my all-time favorite chocolate cakes. Moist, velvety, tender, and full of chocolate flavor. So make it and enjoy it yourself. <laughs>